Hello, Shun here. I'm a Japanese carpenter. I'll now start building the staircase and divide the video into two parts. The staircase will start with a straight stair that goes up six steps. The next will be a winder stair with three fan-shaped steps, and then four straight steps above it, making 14 steps to the second floor. I'll start with making the three fan-shaped steps for the winder part. First, I'll cut and plane the stair material. This is my third video of building a staircase. All three times, the material has been the same local pine wood. Depending on the company and region, pine wood is the best material for conventional construction in my area. This is a usual scene of wood cutting. It looks like there are quite a lot of materials in stock. The lumberyard is shipping me extra material. Nowadays, very few pine trees have a large hardwood portion, so it depends on luck to get them. This is because the logs are getting smaller, and the trees are not as old as they once were. The hardwood portion is large when the tree is old, even if the log is not thick. The pine wood was cut into a square in the log center during lumbering. Edges were cut large at a time and dried up for about two years. I'm using them as stair materials this time. Since I've processed the circuit's material, I transport it using my car. Lumberyards delivers the materials to the workshop and delivers the cut materials to the job site. However, I haven't had the lumberyard deliver any building materials until now. I do this because I don't want other people to touch the materials that I've finished by myself. Well, it's hard to transport them by myself. I've delivered the material to the job site, so I'll begin building the stairs. Before that, I hadn't installed the staircase's support column, so I'll measure the position of the steps on the top 4 steps and the tile around the wood stove to determine the column's position. Then, I'll draw the full-scale drawing based on the position of the column. It's 3 steps in the shape of a fan, which will be the winder. I'm drawing the size and placement of the triangles on the winder in full scale. This can't be calculated. I'll use this to make the threads. There are no rules for drawing the full scale of the three triangle thread. Because people will walk 30 to 40 centimeters from a column, Draw a circle in the area and divide the same dimension into three equal parts on the circle. That way, the place of the thread where we place our foot will be divided into three equal parts. All three threads won't be attached to the same vertical position on the support column. The thickness of the column, the number of steps on top of the winder, and the position of the bottom vary from side to side. Therefore, even if the column is thin, the thread's edge that attaches to the column must be 45 mm wide. It can be difficult to make it in the same position as a vertical when it's 45 mm, but it's unnecessary to do so. Now, I'll install the support column first. I'll join the floor beam and the column with a horizontal member. I'm cutting a notch into that part. I'll use a horizontal member to join them in a simple way, so it doesn't need to be thick. It's the same standard as the support column. The 
the support column is 4 meters long. But the railing wall will run diagonally downward from the second floor. So I didn't need such a long column. Earlier, I cut the mortise in the floor beam. I'll cut a tenon with minor adjustments based on the placement of the mortise and the columns that I measured. I'll cut a 50mm notch into the horizontal member and column joint. It's a simple insertion joint. I'll cut 50mm, attach and secure them. As this column will only support 3 fan shaped threads, I made it as thin as possible. I'll install the railing wall directly to this column later and make it as thin as possible. I'll install the support column. I'll measure the vertical dimension of the column firmly and place it temporarily. Then measure the dimensions of the horizontal member. I'll attach the horizontal member and screw it with screws. I may remove the horizontal member later when installing straight steps above it. If I secure it only with screws, I can remove it later. I replaced the 30 year old laser. This is a blue green laser. The full line will be displayed both vertically and horizontally. The one I've been using was also made by Tajima. However, since I've been using it for 30 years, the line was fading. It wasn't broken, but I've decided to buy a new one. <clears throat> Unlike the red line, I can see it clearly. I'll check the level of the stairs with a laser. Because I'll install the three fine shaped steps in the middle, checking the level is important. Next, I'll install the winder thread on the column based on the laser line. I'll make the markings on the support column using the full scale drawing I showed earlier. I don't hesitate and cut up 50mm even though the column is thin. Also, cut a 50mm notch into the columns and the studs on the wall. I'll notch the column for the threads. Support material can be installed in this column since the riser will be installed. So install the thread at 45mm width and 15mm depth to the columns to make it sturdy. As you can see, the column is thin, but I'll cut off this amount and install the thread firmly.
I'll install support materials on the notch of the columns and studs. The inner wall behind the outer wall is not so thick, so I'll use 30mm by 120mm typical studs as a support material. I can install the stairs on the front of the studs without cutting notches into them. But the corner of the riser will be tricky to install. Additionally, when I screw the thread from the top, the screws come out of the inner side of the columns. For that reason, I'll install the support material on the wall side between the studs. As a result, the thread will be installed on the wall side and the boards will also have more surface to be covered. This reduces the risk of cracking. Now, I'll make the three threads of the winding part. The thread's shape are still triangles, but I'll join two or three boards and make it to a fan. Join means sticking together, so I'll plane both sides straight for them to stick together well. Then, I place a thread on the full scale drawing I made earlier and trace it. I cut the material 2 meters long. I'll cut it to the proper length, attach the two pieces together, and shape it. I made it 2 meters when I processed the wood, and I'm going to make 2 or 3 pieces from it. It's all about joining together pieces from the same wood, that is the most important thing. By doing so, the luster and green pattern will be the same. I've temporarily put the two threads together. Next, I'll attach it with glue. The glue is a quick drying urethane glue that I always use. If I spread a thin layer of this glue and apply pressure, it'll harden very quickly. However, if the overflow part gets on my hands, it can be quite troublesome, which is the most annoying part. In the container, it's made in Germany and the glue itself is a great product, but they don't put much effort into the container, so it isn't easy to use. The first thread has been completed. I'll make the second and third one in the same way as the full side drawing. The glue has dried completely, so I cut the protruding parts with a cutter. Since this is urethane glue, the protruding glue will become a sponge. I can easily cut those parts with a cutter. Next, I'll plane it using an electric plane according to the marks I made at first. Since it's tough to plane it with a hand plane from the start, I'll use an electric plane to do the job. In the area where the riser will be attached, I'll plane it a bit angled on the back side to make attaching it easier.
then I'll cut a notch on the thread where it overlaps the brace. I'll chamfer the cut-in to prevent it from chipping with some sink heads. Then I'll do kigoroshi on the part that goes into the column. I'll temporarily install it to make sure it fits. While temporarily installing it, I'll also measure the actual length of the anti-slip. I made an anti-slip surface for the style on the top of the staircase. I'll also measure that length with the ruler. I'll decide on the strongest location and draw the actual length of it by balancing the whole thing. I'll make an anti-slip groove on the top edge of the thread. The anti-slip is simple, with a round blade and only one light groove. Also, I can shift the position and make two grooves. I only made one. On the back side of the thread, 30mm from the edge, I'll cut a groove for the riser. I'll sharpen the hand plane's blade before finishing the thread. The place that I'm sharpening is on the Pinterest stairs. I can use any plates to sharpen the blade. Now, I'll finish the thread. I've already planed the surface with a super surfacer, but there's a difference in level when joining. So I'm planing it lightly to level it and fix the place that is torn out. The stairs are for a winder, so their shape is tricky to plane. I'll be careful not to damage it by tipping it over. Pinewood is a material that is easy to plane. When plain, the luster comes out because it's resinous. I've finished planing the threads. Now I'll install them. First, Place three threads to check the whole balance and determine the position. I'll take measurements from the surrounding columns. After that, I'll align the front sides of the three threads. Next, I'll make a pilot hole to prevent the wood from cracking, then screw it firmly into place.
There are three threads, so I only saw two risers. Since it's fan-shaped, it'll be a little longer than three shaku. A widely chamfer at the front of the riser's top edge. Before installing, I'll apply glue firmly to both ends. On the winder part, there will be no stringer, so the cuttings of the riser will be exposed to the air and dried. I'll apply glue to the ends to prevent them from cracking. I'll use 65mm and 50mm screws to secure them. At last, I'll apply the glue to the joint between the risers and the threads. Interior construction problems usually occur at staircases. The stairs are made of many solid materials, so when they dry out, they crack and squeak. I use both screws and glue to prevent this from happening. At the same time, I apply glue to the cut-in of the threads and everywhere else I can. Also, this staircase is not exposed to the sun, it could be so for another site. In such a case, it'll crack easily, so I always apply glue to the cut-in to prevent cracking. Now, I've processed the stairs, installed the support column, and completed the winder. I spent three full days installing it. The next time, I'll make six straight stairs, then four steps to the left, totaling 14 steps. I'll make two sets of straight stairs. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.